The Cube presents On the Ground. Hello everyone, welcome to a special The Cube presentation of On the Ground here at Oracle's corporate headquarters. I'm John Furrier, the host of The Cube. I'm here with Chai Pai de Mukla, uh, Senior Director of Product Management with Oracle. Welcome to On the Ground. Appreciate Thank you coming on. Thank you very so much. So talk about the data integration um, strategy and plans for Oracle, and what are some of the products that make that up? So Oracle data integration, we've been around for more than 15 years. We've been helping our customers to move data from um, various systems, sources, and targets. So our products consist of a real-time data integration product, which is used for uh, continuous availability or real-time replication, which is Oracle Golden Gate. It's our marquee product. It's been around for two decades. Um, we also have an ETL product called Oracle Data Integrator, which is a product that actually takes the data and then it transforms the data in the source and the target itself. So it's not like the, the older technologies where you pull the data out of the system and process it in a middle tier. Instead of that, we actually leverage the, the, the power of the source of the target. Um, and that's where we started. We have a data quality suite and a complete data governance foundation. So, um, you know, we have about 12,000 customers, you know, talk about the largest banks, uh, largest telcos in the world. Uh, each and every one of them use our products. So th that completes our data integration product portfolio. So what is this new data integration cloud suite we've been hearing about? Because that's interesting, ties into that. Does that relate and how does that relate? Absolutely, so what we have done is, one of the things that we have been focused as Oracle is, you know, we have had so much traction in the cloud space. So we have seen that when customers are moving their database systems or applications or platforms into the cloud, uh, one of the key challenges remains is how do you get that data from on-premise to cloud or cloud to on-premise? So you know that's where data integration comes into play. And what we have done is we have taken the existing technologies that we have, like our Golden Gate, like uh, Oracle Data Integrator and Data Governance Foundation, and we are making it as a part of a solution stack that gets available, that gets provisioned in cloud, so that any customer can come in and get these products, Oracle Cloud integration stack, data integration stack, and then they can start doing moving data from on-premise to cloud or cloud to on-premise or uh, pure cloud use cases. Uh, and, 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 the, and the stack that we are envisioning is we are not only looking at our traditional products that we have, like Golden Gate, which is a replication product, and ODI, Oracle Data Integrator, but we, have also, we are also introducing a couple of new products. One is uh, Dataflow Machine Learning, um, yeah, which I'll talk about it in, in, in detail. And then we also have uh, a product, data wrangling product called Big Data Preparation Cloud Service, which is already launched and available today, uh, where people are going to look at data and, and start uh, doing semantic extraction of the data. So that's the biggest announcement is, our customers will be able to come to us and instead of focused on a real-time use case or a batch use case, they'll be able to get a, a solution stack, a platform, that they can use for data integration, be it real time or be it uh, batch or uh, be it application integration or database integration. What's this um, Oracle Dataflow ML machine learning thing about too? Because that's also kind of a new thing. That's coming yes, up. you know, I think one of the things that we have done at Oracle is we have been in the forefront of innovation. So a lot of times, you know, we, we do solve enterprise level mission critical use cases, but one of the things internally that we have done is we have been embracing, constantly embracing real time, I mean, uh, open source technologies, big data technologies, and cloud technologies. One thing that we have observed in the marketplace is the traditional ETL is like driving a car using your rear view mirror, right? So you don't, you're not actually analyzing the data as, as it's coming in, you're actually have moved the data, transformed the data, and, and looking at the data and started making decisions. Instead of doing that, what we think is we have built a new platform where we can analyze data as it's flowing through. So let's say your transactions are coming in. You want to detect any fraud on your transactions, banking transactions. What we can do is now we can feed the data, capture the data using Golden Gate, and feed it to into this engine called Dataflow Machine Learning um, uh, uh, Engine, and then we'll be able to do a lot of fraud analytics in real time on it. So the, the, uh, the, the, the whole paradigm of the batch ETL versus real time ETL is, is, is evolving right now. And what we are introducing is a, is a platform that's completely built on an open stack, uh, Spark-based platform. Uh, we are leveraging natural language processing and machine learning 
so that as the data comes in, be it your transactional data, be it any other streaming data, we can actually look at the data and give you more insights in real time so that either you can create alerts or events or you, know, you can detect fraud or you can actually get more insights and do transformation on the data and make, make it available to your business. How much does open source play into this? You mentioned that. Uh, a lot of people always ask me that, so I have to ask you. So one of the things that we have consistently um, uh, have managed to do is not to reinvent the same thing again and again. So for example, when we actually thought about, envisioned about data flow machine learning, uh, the, the technology itself, we had one thing in mind that we, want, we did not want to introduce another engine. So you know, if you look at the traditional ETL uh, companies that are going obsolete right now, they are introducing their own engine where they feed the data into this engine. But what we think is uh, the future is that this, this open source community is so rich and there are so many people who are working on it, we need to leverage those contributions. So for example, our Oracle Data Integrator never had an engine. So we followed the same principle and even in Dataflow we don't have an engine. We use the Spark libraries, we use the machine learning capability, we use the algorithms from natural, natural language processing, excuse me, and um, and then uh, we actually uh, combine all this information and we can, uh, we can process them natively on a Hadoop platform, which is an open source platform, right? And then lo and behold, you can get more insights into your... Uh, so you're uh, not restricting customers, you let them do whatever they want with the data if it's connected in, say, a big, big data appliance and or yes. the cloud suite. So you kind of give them some choice. Yes, so one thing that we have done very consciously uh, at Oracle is we, we acknowledge Oracle database is the number one database in the world, right? We have more than 50% of the enterprise customers, Fortune 500 customers, actually almost all of the Fortune 500 customers use us, right? But the point is we also realize that there are all these other heterogeneous sources where people have been using to store data. So the, the polyglot architecture where people store graphs in a graph database or you know, NoSQL key value pairs in a NoSQL type of database um, is valid and we, we understand the use cases. So all the product capabilities- They're not mutually exclusive. A database now can be put where the data makes sense Exactly. But you guys can still be the systems of record. Yes. Because you have the CRM, the ERP, you have all these data systems that are powering business. A absolutely. So, so why would you restrict data coming in, right? Exactly. <laughs> so one of the things that uh, companies wants to, want to do and customers want to do is they want to be able to take the mission critical transaction data that they have and they want to be able to combine it with the social media data or the interaction data that they're getting or the weblogs data and they want to be able to correlate the information and get more insights. And you know, if you look at it, like you know, if you look at customer experience, if you want to really know your customers, what they are doing, you want to get the CRM data, which is your mission critical data, but you also want to combine it with the social networking data. What do they like? What are they interacting with? What are they clicking on the website? So that you can combine right. both. So um, we have been a heterogeneous platform. We have customers, we have got a, um, a customer who actually uses us only for uh, non-Oracle systems, mm -hmm. and which is absolutely fine with us. We are in the business of data integration. We do it very well with Oracle technologies, but we can also support other technologies. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you guys don't ask customers to be Oracle database everywhere, yes. but you know, in the key areas you do. The question I have to ask you is the one I get all the time from customers and, and people out in the, in the field, practitioners, and I'm kind of paraphrase kind of the pattern question. Um, Oracle, you guys are amazing on the database side, um, but I want to just integrate other data sources and I don't want to have to buy Oracle. Yes. Okay, so that's about what I'm looking for. So what are you doing, Oracle, to make your database smarter? Because there, the customer's view is, okay, I got Oracle database, you know, can I, so, get, can, you, can I get out of that swim lane and expand the intelligence of the Oracle database to a Hadoop, to a Spark, to another environment. We, we have done. We have done a lot of. Um, How do you address uh, that? Yeah, we have done a lot of innovation in terms of database uh, addressing data management in general, right? So first of all, on the data integration side, we have been. We have had customers. The largest cell phone company in the world moves data from an Oracle database to a to a Kafka based queue to do further analysis, right? Uh, the largest electric car manufacturing company is actually trying to optimize their assembly lines in real time so that they don't lose money uh, if the assembly line goes down. So we have done a lot of innovation where, and a lot of these customers are using big data type of technologies to do get additional mm -hmm. insights. So we don't stop them from taking data out from Oracle database or putting data back into Oracle database. 
Not only that, what we have introduced is so we you're have, encouraging people to move data fast around to and from Oracle. Exactly, Why not, right? Exactly, because if you want to get more insights, you want to combine all you know all, all kinds of data: your interaction data, your NoSQL data, your weblog data. We are saying that bring it in. You can use a big data platform. We have uh, we have an offering called Big Data Appliance Cloud, uh, Big Data Appliance, and we are offering it as a cloud service too, where you can actually take an Oracle database and you can take a big data system and we can connect it and we have connected it with NoSQL, uh, with big SQL adapters so that you can issue SQL yeah. and it can operate on both uh, this system, uh, both these sets of data. So you so could operationally, actually, that's a really easy way for a customer rather than deploying a separate exactly. system, training as a sysadmin. Exactly. You know, exactly. Cost of ownership is probably going through the roof. Absolutely. So you see that as a key enabler. Absolutely, absolutely. And and, and I think I think we are in the business of data integration. We treat all data uh, sources and targets equally, and you know we will try we will try and support because when people are you know when customers are making this journey to the cloud, it's okay. important that we treat everybody equally. So, so the old joke that we have, uh, Dave Vellante and I on the queue, we say customers wake up from a coma from ten years ago, and they're in today's world, and the data warehouse is all different. What do you say to that person? Well, welcome back to the real world. But I mean, that's the kind of uh, awakening that these enterprises are, are having where a lot of people haven't made the investments, but now are under a lot of pressure to modernize. Yes. They know Oracle database. They've had some great relationships, but now all of a sudden the world has changed. What do you say to those folks? What is the most compelling thing that's changed over the past five to 10 years I think that's happening now that didn't I, happen I, I think I think the, 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 the two big uh, pivots that we have had in the industry are the, the big data pivot, where people are looking at multiple data management systems and the big data pivot, and then the cloud pivot, because cloud is very important, and we have seen our customers, we have been helping our customers to move entire data center into the cloud in Oracle Public Cloud Infrastructure, where they are saying, I don't want, you know, I want to reduce my total cost of ownership, uh, Im improve productivity. I want to get all these tools that are already available out there, and I don't want to install this software on my system. So, data warehouse as a, a, a as an analytical um, store will still exist. But what's happening is the transition where you move this data, transform the data, where you transform the data, and where you create operational data stores is changing. And that's where we come in and we say, if you have a big data system, you can create your operational data store over there transform all the data over there and send it to your warehousing system. We are not, you know, we, we, we because data warehousing is again, is post analysis. It's not real time analysis as the data is flowing in. So I think, I think, and, and then the cloud, you know, all we have made sure that for our customers, all the platforms that are available today, uh, we, we have both infrastructure as a service platforms, SaaS based service, and we also have data as a service. We are making sure that all these uh, uh, innovation platforms that we have created, including data integration, are available to our cloud customers. So anybody who wants to go to the cloud and they want to get away from these other older mainframe systems, they can come in and use our data integration technology, use our database, use our big data appliance cloud service, and just pivot to the cloud immediately and not don't have to wait. Um, uh, so for speed long. to the cloud, speed to a modern architecture, so if I hear you correctly, you're saying that Oracle's philosophy and strategy is to have the best modern data yes. management system, yes. giving the customer's best choice. Absolutely. Would that be a fair statement? Absolutely. And, and to add to that, we and Of have, course, buying some Oracle database, but op using open source if they want to. Wherever absolutely. They, because the tool makes sense. Because, because one of the things that we have done on our cloud is we not only offer, offer our, our platforms, we also offer big data platforms. So if you want Kafka as a service, it's going to be available. Spark as a service, it's available. We have embraced Docker. So a lot of these things are available um, and, and you know. How about the competition? Where do they stand compared to Oracle? You know, what can I say? I, um, I spent 10 uh, years at a competitor and then I made the change. I joined Oracle three years ago and that competitor is not even a public company anymore. So on the data integration space, we have dominated, we have grown. Uh, we have got about 12,000 customers and it's growing. Uh, we are adding new logos every day, so. And what's the difference? What's the, why is that, why are you guys competitive? Why? Because because the, the three things that we are focused on is no engine. So we did not invest in an engine for a transformation. So we don't pull in the data and, and transform it in our engine, that's one. Second is real time. We are focused on real time because we know that the future is people will want to analyze this data in real time. So our real time platform, which is Golden Gate platform is world class and it's the number one platform. And the last one is we make this everything we make it easily available in the cloud 
and for big data platforms. So you don't have to change anything. It's uh, it's fairly simple. Chai, thanks for spending some time with me on the ground here at your headquarters. Thank you very much. I'm John Furrier here, exclusive coverage of Oracle here on the ground. I'm with theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.